SEC media days just opened, and it didn't take long for Florida State and Clemson to get brought up. So what did the SEC commish have to say? You are Locked On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Shout out to the everydayers for making Locked On ACC your first listen and your first watch today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. On this episode, uh, we will preview Miami heading into this upcoming 2024 ACC football season. Can the Hurricanes win the conference for the first time? I'm uh, going to talk about what could keep them from getting over that hump, but why Miami could absolutely win the ACC this year. But uh, Kenton Gibbs, I, I want to start off on uh, the latest comments on conference realignment. So SEC media days just opened up on Monday. Uh, Monday or the first day of media days is typically when the commissioners speak. So Greg Sankey, the SEC commish, was available to reporters on Monday, and he was asked about how much he's paying attention to the ACC situation and the lawsuits with Florida State and Clemson. Here's what Mr. Sankey had to say, quote, I pay attention. We're focused on our 16, he said. I've said before that I'm not a recruiter. I'm not going to entangle the SEC in litigation. He said 16 is the league today. 16 is the league tomorrow. So he did acknowledge he's paying attention to the lawsuits as anyone involved in college football surely is, but sounds to me like Sankey at least is not publicly entertaining the idea of further expansion. Yeah, that absolutely seems to be the case here. And I think the most interesting thing about what we're seeing with Greg Sankey and his comments here is that it's very non-committal in terms of, hey, I, I have said nothing about adding these two. I've said nothing yeah. about it. Now, is it possible that, you know, you and I have both talked about somebody's playing 4D chess here. Is it possible that this is a 4D chess move? Because once these two schools leave, he's going to whip out the big joker and say, bow, 50 mil a piece. Come on down. Come come join the money train, okay? And the words of Boss Mandilo, you want to boss up your life? All you got to do is get in with me. He could do that. That is a possibility. Or he could be in earnest saying, hey, I'm I'm locked into what's going on right here, right now. I'm paying attention to the present. Whatever happens over there, I'm watching it. Yeah. But, you know, it ain't going to make me lose a wink of sleep one way or the other because those aren't my schools. So, you know, and I also think that it's very interesting that this is – this seems to be – Sankey seems to be the first uh, commissioner to protect his conference from litigation, specifically mention right. litigation in terms of – I'm not tampering with that, which confirms my theory that it definitely is illegal for these schools to be having talks right. with where, new where, where is, already. The, the Big 12 commissioner is like YOLO. He'll talk about anything. But, but Sankey is like not taking that bait. Exactly. And, and it's, it's Sankey moving like a man who I'm the king right now. I don't need yeah. to get desperate. I don't need to reach. I don't need to do things that could have me in courtrooms for years on years, paying out millions of dollars on the back end. I don't need to do it. I'm already the guy doing things legally and legit. I'm ESPN's darling child. I'm the prettiest girl at the ball to them. Therefore, I don't need to call you fat and say that your roles stick out of your corset and your dress because I know I'm pretty. That's what Greg Sankey is doing right now. And it's an excellent move by him, I must admit. Yeah, and, and also um, it it kind of backs up some reports that we've been hearing, like Paul Feinbaum, for example, uh, within the last couple of months commented basically that he, he doesn't think the SEC is interested in further expansion right now. I mean, keep in mind, they literally just added Oklahoma and Texas, so right. they've already got two important new members on their plate. Uh, but a lot of the rhetoric uh, coming from reports has been, well, since the SEC already has a footprint in Florida with – the Gators, they already have a footprint in South Carolina with uh, the Gamecocks that they're they're not interested in adding Florida State and Clemson for that reason. And that, that, that's matched up with a lot of the reporting. I mean, m most of the links uh, for Florida State and Clemson have been to the Big Ten up until the past few days when uh, when the Big 12 has started to gain momentum. And man, Kenton, we've talked a lot in recent days about 
these Big 12 links and reports. I started to take it more seriously when uh, when Jason Jason Shear uh, reported that uh, that the Big 12 now has a, a belief that they will be adding Florida State and Clemson. Not to say any of that is set in stone, but you know anybody who talks about that gets a lot of backlash. Kenton, I don't I don't think, and I understand Florida State fans and Clemson fans obviously do not like the mere idea of going to the Big 12 given all the fighting they're doing in court right now to do what would feel like a lateral move is not very exciting. Uh, I still would not rule out the Big Ten for either or both of them. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't, though, seem like the SEC thing would happen for them. I'm not going to uh, go too in-depth with this, but I would be surprised if the Big Ten is not these two schools' landing spots. I would be shocked if the Big Ten was not their landing spot. Um, so, you know, with that in mind, I – I think that this Big 12 thing is simply a leverage play to say, you know what? We have somebody who's not only interested, potentially interested enough to break the bank and make a move that basically they're riding their whole conference on us. They're about to leverage their entire future on us. And we're not asking you to do that much. All we're asking you to do is make us paid like your other teams instead of having us come in at a discounted rate or a prorated rate. And we'd be fine with that. I think that it's more of that than it is like a, oh, we're actually going to go there type of deal. Like this is a right. very serious option for us. Well, and also, um, it's good for the Big Twelve to have these rumors out there. Yeah, and and that yeah. that's what I'm wondering because so so Jason Shear, who reported that, was clearly reporting it from the angle of the Big Twelve that there's a belief in the Big Twelve that these teams, you know, are are going to be members uh, of that conference within the next year or so. He said so. If that's coming from the Big 12, Kenton, I mean, first of all, we know the Big 12 loves generating whatever publicity they possibly can. But then to give fans the idea, look, we're shooting our shot with the two biggest potential free agents out there. It makes them look aggressive and it makes them look exciting. So they may be the ones planting this. Absolutely. And you and I have talked about this ad nauseum. The Big 12 is the ACC with a Gucci belt and a good PR team. That's what's happening right now. Like this is not the the Big Twelve is not in a an exponentially better situation. The Big Twelve is not in a situation that's like, oh man, the ACC just doesn't. the The only way that we're even talking about this happening is if they accept literal billions with a B dollars in private equity. Is the ACC not also in a position where they could feasibly do that? where if they so chose to, they could go out and find that much in private equity? Of course they are. So what are we saying here? What is the difference? One of those schools or one of these conferences is willing to go that extra step, or even if they're not actually willing, they're willing to put out the reports that, that we we do it. We we totally pull the trigger here, and one of them is not. You know, And that's, that's the biggest difference we're seeing right now, which is forming the perception around these two conferences. Because, again, Jim Phillips, very – Quiet, very cerebral, very thoughtful guy. Your mark fires off the hip. Whatever he feels, yeah. whatever he's thinking, he's going to say it. And it's working out well for him so far because, again, people are thinking that the Big 12 is a part of a Big 3 that's leaving the ACC behind when their power team right now is Utah. Yeah. The mighty Utah Utes. I hear you. I hear you. Well, We'll, we'll circle back to the ACC when we come back. So could could the conference champion this season be a team that's been in the ACC for nearly two decades and is yet to hoist an ACC championship? We'll take a deep dive on Miami when we return. I'm Alex Dono from Locked on Canes. He is Kenton Gibbs from Locked on Wolfpack. We're only getting started on this brand new episode of Locked on ACC. Keep it locked. I'm always keeping it locked to eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. 
Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Thank you for making Locked on ACC your first listen and your first watch today. Now, for your second listen, Kenton, I I am today. I'm on with Drake Toll on Locked on Big 12. So you you know we're going to have some discussions, Drake and I, about everything going on with these conference realignment rumors and reports. So make uh, make Locked on Big 12 your second listen, your second watch today. And Drake, Drake does a fantastic job. Uh, so l- let's put our focus on the Miami Hurricanes. And, you know, Kenton, I'm... Obviously very aware that since uh, joining the ACC in 2004, Miami has zero ACC championships. Um, This is a season where they may have the roster to finally get that done. Key additions through the transfer portal, Cam Ward at quarterback, who dazzled at Washington State the last couple of years. Last season, 3,735 passing yards, 25 touchdowns, nine interceptions. I uh, did have 14 fumbles. He wants to, not all of them were lost, but he wants to clean up on that for sure. Damian Martinez, who rushed for 1,185 yards last year and nine touchdowns for Oregon State, has joined Miami defensive side of the football. Mish Powell, who was a, a safety on national champion runner-ups, Washington last year is a key addition. And Miami's over-under this season, Kenton, is nine and a half wins, which is actually the same win total over under that Florida State and Clemson have uh, topped the conference. So the odds makers think it's going to be a close season this year. And, you know, this is this is expected to be, you know, a Miami that can hopefully find more consistency on the field, especially at the quarterback position with Cam Ward. Dynamic player. They have the most dynamic player in the position that is the most important in all of football. Cam Ward is by far, when he is rolling, when he is at his highest clip, when he is taking care of the ball, and I know to say that when Cam Ward is taking care of the ball is a very tough stipulation. It's like saying Kawhi Leonard is good when he's healthy. I get it. I understand. But the difference between the two is Kawhi can do nothing about his health. Cam Ward can do a lot about his turnover issues. He can do a lot about, you know, sometimes it's best to just eat a sack. Instead of, oh, I can bring the ball down, I can scramble, I can do my best Mike Vick impression. It's not necessary. Sometimes the best play you can make is saying, oh, no, the pass is closing in. Let me go ahead and go down. Get this five-yard loss instead of an 11-yard loss and a potential fumble um, trying to escape. And so you talk about him. You talk about X, Xavier Restrepo. You talk about Martinez, a big, powerful back that is built in the coach's image, a guy that he wants to be his guy because he fits the mold of a crystal ball quarterback or a running back, rather, a crystal ball running back. You look at that, you look at an offensive line that while they're losing some guys, they're still bringing back a ton of talent as well. You say to yourself, this team can be just fine. However, if we're asking the question, can they win the ACC? I think that's a resounding yes. I think that's a resounding yes. Anybody who's telling you, oh, Miami, is just, they're going to Miami it up. Here's the deal. Even though that is definitely a thing, nobody, anybody who says Miami pulling a Miami is not a thing, they're lying to you. They're telling you untruths. Dono is not that guy, nor am I. However, like Dono has talked about, this is the most talented Miami roster in quite some time, number one. Number two, this is the worst the ACC has looked around them in quite some time. That's that's another part of this that people really need to take into account. And number three, I think that Crystal Ball has learned from the mistakes in his past. I really do. He had the kneeling situation when he was at Oregon against Stanford. He had the kneeling situation when he's at Miami against Georgia Tech. I think he's learned sometimes the obvious answer is the right answer. And when you have players as good as his are this year, sometimes you just have to go to obvious answers and the test is going to come back at 95%. So we'll see how this thing works out. But if you're asking, can Miami win the conference? Are they a real and relevant team in this conference? That answer is absolutely. If everything holds in terms of their health and they play their best ball and everybody else plays their best ball, I think Miami has a great shot. The only Achilles heel and weakness you see is that secondary. But, Dono, you and I both know this. Me playing football for as many years as I have, you covering it. The front end affects the back end 
before the back end affects the front end. And Miami's got a damn good front end defensively. That that group led by Ruben Bain is phenomenal. So I, I really and truly think Miami is a contender in this conference. And to say that they're not is is just, you know, you're you've got to be some type of hater to, to say that. Yeah, and, and I think to, to me, um, on paper, and we'll talk a little bit more about the concerns uh, before before we wrap up this episode, but I, I think what can make Miami extra special, and of course you got to stay relatively healthy, is the potential on offense. Because what, what Miami on paper, they can, they can have the ability to dictate whether they're a power running team when necessary or a prolific passing team when necessary. Not not a lot of other teams in this conference have the luxury to go either way, where Miami can essentially take what the defense gives to them and they can dictate these games. Obviously, knowing Cristobal, he'd probably like to establish the power running game first, but there are games where you go up against defenses like Florida State, uh, you know, Florida to open up the season, Louisville's, Virginia Tech has a good defense. So there are going to be some games where obviously you're going to have to throw the football to win. That's why you have Cam Ward, and that's why you have uh, the most experienced wide receiver core in the ACC returning uh, Xavier Restrepo's 1,000-plus yards last year, Jacoby George over 800 yards, uh, Sam Brown, who transferred in from Houston, had over 800 yards receiving last year. Um, so they, they seem to have the horses on offense where you can either run it down the throat with Damian Martinez and Mark Fletcher behind a physical offensive line or Cam Ward, and those weapons should be able to dice you up. So that's an advantage uh, on offense. Defensively, you talk about the front seven, Kenton, and yeah, guys like Ruben Bain and Akeem Mesidor, Tyler Barron, Elijah Alston are going to set the tone on the edges. You know, Miami did lose a, a talented uh, defensive tackle, but not very consistent from the last few years with Leonard Taylor. They hope Simeon Barrow, who transferred in from Michigan State, and C.J. Clark, who transferred in from NC State, can really help fill that void. And it's a big boost for Miami that Kiko Maui Noah is back for his senior season. He had an excellent year at linebacker last year. So, yeah, if you look at uh, the front seven on defense and just uh, the well-rounded nature of the offense, this is a team that really has no excuses, you know, not to not to win really less than nine to ten games uh, this coming year. But we'll talk about on the other side, again, a little bit more on the obstacles, Kenton, because yeah. obviously yeah. not everything's perfect. Otherwise, Miami would be considered a, a national championship contender. So we'll talk about what could go wrong this coming season. You want to keep it locked right here. We're not done yet on this brand new episode of Locked on ACC. Thank you so much for making Locked On ACC your first listen and your first watch. The Locked On Network has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. All right, so before we get to uh, to the potential uh, landmines, Kenton, I also want to bring up Miami's schedule for this coming season is another reason why there, there is some belief in the Hurricanes. Uh, nationally, their schedule ranks in the 40s, which is, you know, not too shabby for Power 4. And, you know, Miami is fortunate enough to avoid Clemson in the regular season, to avoid NC State in the regular season, two of the better teams in the ACC Miami opens up uh, at the Florida Gators, which is a non-conference game, but a big barometer game, August 31st. Miami hosts Texas A&M. They host Ball State. They play at USF. Uh, then their first conference game, they host the Virginia Tech Hokies on a Friday night. Uh, they play at Cal, which is you know unprecedented type of road trip for the ACC. Uh, they have the bye week, uh, first bye week after that. Then they will play at Louisville, which I believe is one of the Two toughest games on the schedule, and then the toughest game on the schedule at home against Florida State the following week, then home against the Duke Blue Devils at Georgia Tech. Um, you know, they'd like to uh like to erase the memories of last year, I'm sure. And then they have another bye week, followed by Wake Forest at home and Syracuse on the road to wrap up the regular season. So it's it's a it's a manageable schedule. And as mentioned, Miami is fortunate, unlike you know, last season. They're able to avoid NC State and Clemson in the regular season, which definitely could help. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you're going to be trotting out nearly 400 pounds. Oh, I'm sorry, nearly 500 pounds of running back between Martinez and Fletcher. And yeah. uh, you're going to be trotting out an offensive line that, again, 
Matt Lee was special. He, he was a really, really good center for the year that he was there, but we all knew he was a one-year rental, correct? Uh, I believe he's yeah. he's going on to the NFL now and all that, but yes, that's yeah. that that group offensively up front was special, but that's Cristobal's specialty. If there's anything that you can say, regardless of the bad decisions, regardless of, you know, hey, he may make some moments where you're just like, what are you doing in terms of as a tactician? When it comes to recruiting those buffet busters, Mario going to do it. He going to do his big one every time. So with that in mind, you are expecting a very physical team that can just lean on guys throughout the game and they'll get better and better and better as that goes on. Now, the the only thing that I would look at and say, hey, the schedule and the odds makers, they seem to be in lockstep here. Why are they only at nine and a half with that schedule? Because I'm looking at that schedule. How many games would you say if somebody said you got to bet your house one way or the other right now in terms of Miami or their opponent? How many of those games would you say, yeah, Miami, uh, they, they, they're looking kind of shaky right here? Florida State, um, for obvious reasons, even though, you know, we'll see how Florida State looks, but I, I agree they, they should be favorites to win the conference this year. So Florida State at home and uh, Louisville on the road, it's going to be it's going to be a tough one. So I, I would say th- those two are the games I would look at now and say that they, they'd be underdogs in those games. And so do you understand what I'm saying here in terms yeah. of if you have the countenance and if you have the right attitude? And I get it. We're talking 18 to 22 year olds, right? Keeping 18 to 22 year olds on task for all those weeks straight. Incredibly difficult. However, you're looking at a situation where if you can pull off the upset in that Florida State game. If you can pull off a win, which I don't think they'll be underdogs in, I'm not sure they'll be underdogs on the road against Louisville. We'll see how the season plays out. We'll see. But but all in all, you're looking at a situation where, for the most part, you're going to be the favorite every time or it's going to be a push in one game. One game, you would be the underdog. Maybe even I'll throw you two. It's still like, mm, what, is, what does Vegas know that they're like nine and a half is the line? Well, I mean, a couple things. One of one of them is um, an, an obvious, understandable to an extent, lack lack of faith in Mario Cristobal to make yeah. the right critical decisions in the most critical moments, right? When you're talking about final <laughs> two minutes of a game, final play of the game. So th- there's always that. And he's got to prove otherwise, right? Because he's, he's had – he had a – Major gaff at Miami last year. He had one of those a few years ago at Oregon as well. So there's definitely that. Uh, I think there's also something to be said, um, just as an an experienced uh, sports fan and sports analyst, just learning increment, learning incrementally how to win. Where you know Miami, it's just it's not. I'd like to think they have a, a strong locker room culture and they've got leaders, but you're still looking at a team that went seven and six last year, five and seven the year prior. Um, I, I do believe there is a certain learning how to win that comes into play. Whereas, you know, Florida state comes off a 13 and one season and, and Clemson had a, had a good season, obviously a good recent culture there. So um, I, I think there's just a certain amount of lack of faith from the betting public to say, Hey, how come this team that usually underachieves is suddenly expected to achieve? There's going to be a certain amount of doubt that comes with that. And then, you know, actually roster wise, you touched on this a little bit, Kenton, in the last segment, um, there's there's some question marks on the back end of the defensive secondary. Now they've got talented players there. It's just talented players who haven't played a lot, right? right. Where you know someone like either Damari Brown or Jadis Richard is going to have to step up to be a starting boundary corner this year. Um, you know th- those guys haven't played consistently. You know they do have Daryl Porter Jr. who's going to lock down one side of the field who comes off a really good year last year. I mentioned uh, former Washington Husky, Mish Powell, who transferred over. He's either going to start uh, at, at safety or in the nickel. I think that's kind of yet to be determined. So you're going to have one or two inexperienced starting safeties after losing um, after losing Cam Kitchens and James Williams last year. You may have Jaden Harris and Markeith Williams, who were their understudies last year. They may step up and start. So there's just there are question marks there. Again, talented players, but they haven't gotten a lot of opportunities. So you don't exactly know – what you're getting on the back end for the most part. So that, that, that's going to be a question mark is Miami lost uh, one of their starting corners. They lost their starting nickel, two starting safeties last year. There's only one returning starter uh, on the defensive secondary. So like you said, the front 
seven really sets the tone for the defense and creates that domino effect, but there still are some uncertainties and question marks on the back end. So if you're looking at potential Achilles heels, it would be that. And uh, there's also one thing that many people don't talk about, but it needs to be said. This stretches beyond Mario Cristobal, but it has to be talked about with Miami. There's something in the water in Coral Gables that has ruined player development for the last 10, 15 years. Guys yeah, come in definitely. super highly touted. Guys in the preseason, this guy's going to be a first rounder. This guy's going to be a first rounder. This guy's going to get drafted. And then all of a sudden, come draft day, you see all these guys that left early going undrafted, going drafted sixth, seventh round, where it's like, man, a team is basically taking a flyer on you. There's something about player development that if Mario Cristobal can figure that part out, it'll be smooth sailing for Miami this year. But if they can't, don't get me wrong. The Larry's and the Joes are impressive. But, you know, one of the things that I, I think we also haven't really touched on that secondary, yes, there are talented players. There's also a lack of depth. If any one of those yeah. guys – Right. goes down if any one of the guys you just named goes down with a significant injury you're having to to play a pair a player that not only has no experience but is relatively unheralded entirely like oh yeah this is, is we've got a guy uh we've there's a human body with a heartbeat who can run fast but that's you know you, you really don't know too much in that regard so i really think that this year if this offseason mario has developed and taken had a few guys take a next step in the right direction in this program, I do think that they could find themselves in a similar situation to where Florida State was last year, where I believe the year before they were what eight and five or so, and then all of a sudden nine. Yeah, I think they won nine, and the, but nine. before that, before they won nine, they'd had losing records for a few years, and then they Nor Norvell figured it out, and and they exactly. rose quickly. It, exactly, and so Mario Cristobal is right there. He's right on the cusp of that. Let's see if he can get it done this year. So you guys uh, let us know in the comments below if you think Miami can contend and win the conference this year or if you're not buying it. And uh, we are later this week. I want to talk Florida State. I want to talk Clemson. And tomorrow, going to take you into Kenton's uh, right into his wheelhouse, so we'll talk NC State. NC State, who is a team that's probably slept on by too many. Now, I do, I do like how some of the best college football analysts out there have been making sure to tell us, do not sleep on NC State. Watch out for this team. I don't think enough people are saying it. So we'll we'll talk about the Wolfpack's chances uh, to contend this coming season. They've got a new quarterback. They've got some toys for him to throw the football to. They definitely have some great players on the defensive side of the football. They're well coached. So we'll talk about the NC State Wolfpack tomorrow. Thank you so much for making Locked on ACC your first listen and your first watch today. We'll talk to you next time on another episode right here on the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day.